Hello everyone. In this INR number 80, I am going to tell you uh, about AML M3, which is also called as acute promyelocytic leukemia, or in short, we say that APML. Right. So this is a very important PYQ, and from here you can expect question in NEET PG and FMG exam. So AML M3, as I said, this is the acute promyelocytic leukemia or APML. So who will be commonly affected? Commonly these are younger patients and most commonly they are associated with ovary rods. So when you are going to see the blast cell here, right? So you can see uh, in some of the blast cell, you can see prominent nucleoli and some of the blast cell, you can see the granules also in the cytoplasm. But look at this, this blast cell. In this blast cell, you can see so many tiny eosinophilic rod-like structures are there. So these tiny rod-like structures are called as ovary rods, right? So ovary rod is a sign of myeloid differentiation. Remember, this will never be seen in any lymphoid, only in the myeloid differentiation, right? So most commonly associated with ovary rods, that is why it is AML, right? This is the myeloid differentiation. So when you see lot of granules, can you see lot of granules are present? So this AML M3 will be called as hypergranular variant. Remember, this is called as hypergranular variant of the AML. Now look at this AML also. You can see there are no granules or very scanty granules. Actually, here there are no granules. No granules. You are only seeing the ovary rod in this. That is why you are seeing AML M3. So when you are saying AML M3 here, that will be having no granule or very scanty amount of granule will be present in the cytoplasm. So they are called as microgranular. So please remember acute promyelocytic leukemia, they are hypergranular variant and microgranular variant. So hypergranular variant, they will be having lot of ovary rods and a lot of granules. That is why hypergranule. Microgranular variant, no granule or scanty granule, but ovary rods will be present. So there is the one question in exam, what is phagot cell or phagots? Right. So phagot is nothing. It's a collection of the ovary rod. So group or bundle of ovary rod is called as phagot cell. So this was the PYQ. So what I wanted to tell you here that examiner may ask you in future exam that phagot cells are most commonly associated with which variant. Right. So or even ovary rod are associated with which variant. So they are most commonly associated with hypergranular variant. Right. So remember phagots are associated with hypergranular variant. So younger patient most commonly associated with ovary rods and phagot is a collection of ovary rod and they are all most commonly associated with hypergranular variant of APML. So now you can see this is the another APML where you can see collection of the ovary rods are there. So this is called phagot and such cell is called as phagot cells, right? So this is about AML M3. So now how we will confirm by using the special stain so we can use myeloblast so how how we will identify myeloblast why we were saying that less granular is the uh, myeloblast only so we can use myeloperoxidase stain and they will be myeloperoxidase positive so remember myeloperoxidase positive will be showing you cytoplasmic black color black color inclusion so now you can see all these are myeloperoxidase positive then cytogenetics we will do to confirm the diagnosis which will show you translocation 15 17 right so remember translocation 15 17 is a translocation between pml pml is present on chromosome number 15 rara is present on chromosome number 17 and because of this translocation they will form the fusion gene right so this is how fusion gene will be formed by them so translocation 15 17 this fusion gene where you are seeing the involvement of retinoic acid receptor alpha is a very important in the treatment because they will be having excellent response to the treatment what treatment we are going to give atra atra is a all trans retinoic acid right so remember this is the line of harrison it should be it should be both of them which will be giving the superior response to the low risk cases so we will be having atra also we will be having arsenic trioxide also right so all trans retinoic acid and arsenic trioxide these are the line of the harrison 21st edition if you open you will see this and complication in this patient so sometime what happened when you give the treatment so they will have the rupture of the granule and they can release the ovary rod and these ovary rods are having lot of procoagulant which can precipitate or which can complicate the DIC or which can give the DIC. So because of DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation, you may see the patient will be having severe bleeding 
tendency right so patient is having severe bleeding tendency because of dic or disseminated intravascular coagulation so this is the important point about the a apml or aml m3 so keep revising this topic best wishes for your exams